Oh, man. Nathany Shave Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. And it's time for another edition of the Weekly Track Roundup, where I go over what I thought were the best and the worst tracks of the week. They're all linked down below, along with our Turntable Lab link. We get kickback from it. Use it. Check out some of the records and turntables they have over there. Also, our Patreon page. Get some extra bonus monthly content while supporting this channel in the process. Access to our Discord, too. And our weekly newsletter, where we pack all the delicious content we do every week. Don't miss a single piece of it with that newsletter. Sign up. And here we go. Worst tracks of the week. Starting off with uh, Lucky. Greed, new track featuring Little Yachty. It is comatose. It's a bore. It's underproduced. It's underwritten. I don't see the appeal at all. It's in one ear and out the other. I'm done. Then we have this new one from Liz, Liz Fair, Exile and Guyville herself, coming through with a new track, a new single with a music video. It's titled Hey Lou. And uh, while I do like sonically, it's going back in a more raw direction for her. The writing I'm not so much into. It's like a weirdly voyeuristic song about Lou Reed, but sung from the standpoint of his widow, Lori Anderson. And I, I guess keep in mind, these are two artists that personally I, I hold both of them in very high regard. And the writing from Anderson's perspective seems to just insinuate that Lou is like a drug addled po like a drug addled bore and <laughs> i mean i guess i you know understand that lou reed has a past he has a reputation and if you have an issue with the guy as a writer as a songwriter as whatever i mean voice your issues with the guy but i feel like to do a song like this and sing it from the perspective of his widow who you know, famously cared very much about him and held him in very high regard just to me seems like really tacky and odd. I don't know if there's something uh, that I'm missing here. Maybe Fair has some kind of insight into their relationship that I don't. I don't know. It, it just seems like in really bad taste. It's just a really awkward, weirdly obsessive song that uh, I'm I'm having a hard time wrestling with even though i've read like some takes that seem to read it as a tribute it seems like way too irreverent to be a tribute but simultaneously it seems like it's trying to be funny it's self-aware about the comedy that it's delivering but it doesn't seem like you know we're laughing together we're laughing at somebody who i'm like trying to tear apart in a weird way it's it's an odd track all around and i i'm done trying to make heads or tails of it honestly um a new one from little tj as well featuring black which i don't mind the super slow production on it and if this were just simply a black song i think it would be a pretty decent one but uh little tj's mega nasally voice and non-existent delivery is just so uninspired and pointless i don't get it at all no thank you uh, let's move on to the tracks that I thought were meh. Not uh, blowing me away, but certainly like worth a shout out. Let's do it. Uh, new one from Eve Jarvis over here, which uh, uh, this track projection is a very freaky experimental folk type song with uh, insane production and tense, tense, tense drumming. Uh, I've not been a huge fan of this uh, of this artist stuff in the past, but uh, uh, this certainly seems like, a, you know, a, a, a bit of a moment that uh, clicked with me at least a little bit. Uh, the vocals and the overall song seemed a little bit too dodgy to like really snap to me. But um, uh, regardless, there were a lot of intriguing elements to this track. And, you know, if, if you're into any kind of like left field or alternative, you know, folk or lo-fi music or home recorded stuff. I do recommend checking it out. Uh, then we have a new one from Slow Tie and Skepta Cancelled. New one off of Slow Tie's uh, latest Tyron. My thoughts on that will be coming out very soon. Review this week. Just uh, check it out there. Uh, we have a new one from Mogwai. The, uh, the famed post-rock band has come through with another teaser to their forthcoming record. Uh, this one over here I think goes a little bit harder than the last one they dropped, but at the end of the day, it just seems like some, I don't know, Pat Stains is the title of the track. It just seems like some very passable, soundtrack-friendly instrumental rock. At least the ending goes kind of hard, I suppose. 
Uh, we also have this new one from Men I Trust. It's soft. It's groovy. It's like a slow motion Mac DeMarco in a way. Um, you know, it wasn't really like banging or nothing, but it was certainly pleasant while it was on. Uh, Tides is the title of it. Uh, moving on from there. Maddie Diaz, Man and Me, is this next track over here. I do love the vocals. I like how tense and uh, I guess uh, emotionally compelling the singing is on this cut. Maybe the instrumental could have used a little bit something more, but if you're really into like, let's say that Phoebe Bridgers type sound at the moment, I think you will certainly mess with this. Uh, we also have a new one from Lucky Day, a new project out really, and I picked out the uh, uh, one featuring Ari Lennox where they have quite a bit of vocal chemistry. The production is a tad bit bland, but Access Denied is the title of the track, and it's certainly worth a listen. Uh, Kings of Leon have dropped another teaser and actually this one's not too bad it's sort of like a very lo-fi alternative rock cut with a bit of gusto to it echoing is the title check it out below of course we also have a new one from guap dad 4000 how many ill mind on the feature and uh the vocals are kind of underwhelming on this one but i will say the production featuring an interpolation from alice dj is kind of a surprise and a novel change of pace i suppose uh then we have a new one from greta van fleet um heat above it's actually not that bad you know i mean still they sound very derivative at this point not really changing up their sound too much but it's at least a somewhat gutsy performance on all fronts even some yodeling on the vocals i mean the vocals may still annoy the hell out of you but you know at, at least they're uh, uh trying a few different things i guess um, Dua Lipa over here with a new track that uh, I thought was just okay. Very plain trap style production or trap influenced pop production. We're Good is the title. The vocals are maybe the most standout thing about it, but I don't know. I feel like as Dua kind of drifts away from that hard hitting, rich, retro vibe of her last record uh, with some of these newer tracks, like the more her appeal kind of dwindles. I mean, hopefully she latches on to something just as interesting with her next album cycle, because I, I really don't think this uh, this single is it. Um, then we have a new one from Django Django featuring Charlotte Gainsbourg, believe it or not. Um, while the vocals are presented in a very messy way, the song is kind of endearing and sweet. Glowing in the dark is the title. It's kind of fun. Give it a listen. Uh, another one from Danny Elfman over here, Love in the Time of COVID, is the title. While it's not as tightly wound or I think is a well-composed as some of his other recent singles, it's still heavy, still insane, still menacing, and still will give you nightmares if you listen to it. I mean, this, this guy's kind of a god when it comes to uh, weird-ass soundtrack music, so... <laughs> I suppose uh, uh, anything that he does is probably worth hearing at this point. Uh, then we have a new one from Cakes the Killer coming through once again with proper villains uh, doing a bit of a you know hip house thing, and uh, it, the grooves go. You know I, I don't think it's uh, uh, quite as uh, uh, hard hitting as like Don Dada. You know any of that uh, uh, stuff that came off that uh, Moverland EP, but it's still worth a listen. What's the word is the title. Uh, then we have the best tracks of the week, the ones that really stuck out to me uh let's run it ba bam new one from young stoner life we have t shine and young thug and meek mill on this one and it's just a banger it's just a straightforward true blue trap banger with some good production hits hard good vocal performances too meek really lights the start of the track up love it and then we have another one from taylor swift love story new version because she is uh, uh, beginning to roll out the re-recordings of her old stuff i guess she's kind of kicking things off with uh, her 2008 album fearless and this new version is great better vocals better instrumental more kick-ass drums and uh more kick-ass fiddle on this version too i think the hook goes a little bit harder and uh yeah i just think the uh, new version goes good it sounds like it stays as faithful as it can to the original form of the song while making some very slight tasteful and necessary improvements all right then we have a new one from sarah newfeld it is a beautiful gorgeous little ambient piece with a just awesome sounds and sound play throughout stories is the title. Then we have a new one from uh, Boney Vare collaborating with Ross Gay, who I guess is uh, dropping an LP 
and he is a famed poet. And Lord, his poetry and his performance, his delivery on this uh, track is incredible. Oh my God, I can't say enough nice things about it, like the wordplay and the imagery is stunning and the passion in his voice and uh, like the pace at which he delivers his words just really kind of keeps me on the edge of my seat from the front to the back of this track. I'm really excited to uh, see how this project that's cooking up uh, pans out. For sure, for sure. Uh, Rebecca Black, yes, that Rebecca Black has come through with the 10-year anniversary of Friday doing a remix featuring Big Frida, Dorian Electra, 303, and Dylan Brady on production, It Bangs. Some weird high-pitched hyper-pop vocals that I don't know if they quite complement Rebecca's style and everything, but uh, I don't know. It's a pretty incredible remix. I mean, super ambitious, just fun instrumental, and uh, I, I think a, a cool way for Rebecca to you know, turn for, uh, you know, what was a negative for a good deal of her life in, into a positive, into a positive. So, all right. Uh, we have Fife Dog coming through with some posthumous stuff. Nutshell Part 2 with Redman and Busta Rhymes. Great beat, great verses, incredible en energy and chemistry between these three. Love it. It's fantastic. Can't wait to hear more that's uh, just as good as this. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, the inspired album, which, you know, is the soundtrack for the film, has tons and tons and tons of great tracks on it. I do want to highlight specifically the Nipsey Hussle and Jay-Z track, um, uh, what it feels like, which uh, instrumentally is just great. Uh, Nipsey's opening verse is great. Uh, Jay-Z's uh, verse in the middle of the track is dense and thought-provoking and thought-provoking and very reflective of current times and the uh, gorgeous little instrumental you know uh, that plays out the entire thing is a nice touch as well and look while I have you here talking about this track there are a lot of other fantastic tracks and artists featured on this soundtrack from Jid to Rhapsody to Black Thought to Smino and Jid and Polo G. Like, there's a lot of great artists on this thing. There's a lot of quality production. Hit Boys fingerprints are all over it. You're not gonna want. You're you're not gonna want to miss this thing. So, uh, absolutely, give the entire thing a listen if you can, because there's a lot of standouts on it. All right, uh, Lil Texas has come through with a new one, Louder. It bangs, of course. It is insane. It is hard style times a million. The distorted kicks are just crushing my skull, and I'm in love with it. I'm just in fucking love with it. Every time this guy drops a track, it's uh, just a planet smasher, and uh, I just cannot get enough. All right, uh, new one from Leon Vinehall, and uh, I, I have the edit of this new track of his Mothra linked down below. And it is a super heady piece of techno with an incredible baseline. And, um, I don't know, just really looking forward to what he's dropping this year. If the rest of it sounds this good, like Lord. All right. Uh, JPEG mafia wanted to shout out at least one track from his new EP. Of course, this one's for us. It's great. Read into the lyrics, uh, loving the, you know, more of a, uh, kind of low-key R&B and pop style that he's embracing with this uh, new EP. Talked about a video, uh, talked about it on a video on this channel, if I could talk. Um, you know, just kind of shouting out some EPs that I'm enjoying as, as, as of late. This is one of them, so don't miss it. And, uh, oh, we have uh, one over here from Hymera, an artist who I haven't heard of before, but this track is a wonderful, heavenly instrumental that really, like, made me just transcend. I just transcended. That's all I can say. I just transcended to this shit. So if you're looking to transcend, and when I say transcend, I mean transcend me to another dimension, like transcend me to the clouds with the angels playing harps and shit, like give it a listen. Jeez. All right. Uh, Danielle Harl, Harlcore. Uh, this one is fantastic. It's hard hitting. It's zany. It's colorful. I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing what's uh, going to play out with uh, this new project of Danny's Interlocked is the title. Uh, we also have, of course, DJ Mayhem, DJ Mayhem uh, featured on the track as well. Uh, Blank Mass, Inferno. We have another teaser from this. Star Stuff is the title. It is an insane, psychedelic, overwhelming, uh, minimal electronic piece with an incredible, just crushing ending. And uh, Baby, oh, excuse me, Baby over here has a uh, cool, mystical, wondrous little piece of uh, a futuristic pop right here that instrumentally has a big, uh, I suppose, uh, Igloo Ghost vibe going on. Like it quite a bit, quite a bit. And uh, Alton Gunn 
has a new record on the way. They've dropped another teaser from it. And uh, this one is psychedelic. It's funky, solid lead vocals. And the bass lines are fantastic, too. Um, just loving the energy this band is bringing on this new album cycle. Um, you know, I, I almost get a little bit of like a Tame Impala vibe to it. But there's like a serious, like foreign spice to it that uh, I'm, I'm loving. I'm absolutely loving. So, all right. I think that's uh, going to do it for the weekly track roundup. Again, all those songs, everything is linked down below. Check it all out for yourself. And I will see you guys in the next one. You're the best. Anthony Fantano, Tracks, Roundup, uh, Forever.